audio seems screwy. But then my audio is always screwy. I wanted to do a video on self-driving cars. So, how crazy is that? Well, the... So, let's get into this. Do-do-do-do-do. Okay. Now, let's get in a little closer. I can always use better audio. Um, I wanted to talk about the self-driving cars, specifically with a couple people's reaction to them. Uh, mostly this is a sort of reaction to Matt Inman's article, Six Things I Learned from Dri Riding in a Google Self-Driving Car. Generally I like Matt Inman's stuff, The Oatmeal. Uh, go to theoatmeal.com, it's freaking hilarious. Good stuff. Uh, also, to some extent, a much more recent article by Ronald Bailey, Self-Driving Cars, Half-Assed Automation is Stupid and Dangerous. So let's talk about those two things. I think this is going to be a short video, but then I never damn know anymore. Backstory. Uh, Self-Driving Cars. Google has been developing a self-driving car for a while. A car that you get in it, you tell where you want it to go, and it just goes there. You don't need to have... Here, let's move this, so... Move my focus just a smidge. So you don't have to have a driver's license or be able to drive. Uh, excellent for... You name it. Some place who has to... Someone who has to get from one place to another who doesn't have a license. Not the least of which being the person doing this video right now. Uh, I personally have... I had a learner's permit a, a number of times, but I always failed the tests. Like, I've had a learner's permit numerous times. Uh, mind you, this was a long, long time ago. At this point, it's just like, uh, look, I had an opportunity to get a house or a car. I kind of le leaned on the house, and I think that's a better was a better proposition. Eh, so we'll see. But... It, that's neither here nor there. They're useful as all hell. I could see the technology catching on. It, it's great. A car that drives itself. For a number of reasons. One of which, humans are, <laughs> are bad drivers. Uh, auto accidents kill quite a few people every year. Uh, it's a leading cause of death. One of the top five, I want to say, in the United States. Auto accidents. Top 5 or top 10? I'm not going to bother to look that up, but it's up there. Um, no shortage of people dying in in bad crashes, or in some many cases, not even of their own. Like, someone else got on the highway the wrong way, dri drunk driver, bad infrastructure, traffic, you name it. A lot of ways to get killed in a car. But uh, the self-driving car eliminates a lot of that. Generally the designs that have come out, mostly Google. Although Uber has also gotten its own self-driving car, others have been looking at this technology as well. But it seems the preference in driving cars is cautious as crazy. Like it drives like someone's grandma. Super slow, super careful, which isn't that bad. I mean, do you you're in a car with no driver, the need for speed shouldn't be there. If it is, you need another. You shouldn't be in a self-driving car. What else? Uh, other advantages are, meh, do you really need to own a car? I mean, being able to have a service, uh, that's what the route Uber is going, and maybe Google as well, where you just order up a car to show up at your house, it just takes you wherever you need to go. Uber style. Uh, like a taxi, only with no taxi driver, or proper taxi for that matter. Interesting idea. I'd use it, honestly, if it were inexpensive. I'd use it quite a bit, actually. Uh, Uber so far has been, uh, I did it in another video, Uber has been uh, a huge boon to me. Much more than taxis, which are like three times the price around here. So, self-driving car. No one to tip. Gosh, I mean, it has a lot going for it. 
What other benefits? I, I could see quite a few. I mean, especially for an older person to get around or someone who's not well. Matt Inman uh, specifically, the oatmeal, specifically mentions how his, I think his mother had a stroke or something, and someone who used to be socially very active couldn't be any more what a what a boon for someone like that. Uh, yeah, his mom had a stroke. So I could see that. I mean, it's it's all the advantages of a taxi with none of the downsides that I can imagine. People are talking about, uh, but it's not a human being behind the wheel, so maybe it'll malfunction and have accidents. And it's it strikes me it's inevitable that it's going to happen. So far, I mean, it's just a matter of technology and and society around the, the car to get that part right. So that's what it is. It has a lot of advantages, few disadvantages, and eh, it's, a, it's a new thing. It's a new thing and people react to new things the way they react to new things, which is a combination of interest, wonder, horror, and concern. You know, new thing, wow! Urgh, I could see how these cars will... Honestly, with a self-driving car, I don't know. Become sentient and turn on their human masters. Like, drive you to the wrong place, drop you off, and... Just play loud music. I don't know, I have no idea how a driving car is... Whatever. But, but there were... And I... Like I said, there's, there's nothing to this, so... Not a lot for me to talk about until I kind of saw Ron Ronald Bailey's article and I thought back to to Matthew Inman's and I'm like, uh, I got a little bit to talk about. So I'll talk about that, post a quick vid, because I never do short vids. All, all my stuff's stupid long. We'll go from there, I'm, but I'm dragging it out so to see how things happen, until they get the way they are. Okay. Short, 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 short and sweet. Let's do Ronald Bailey first. <clears throat> Ronald Bailey's take was some self-driving car manufacturers are sort of aiming for, I think he put it as a fork. Like the technology seems to have, seems to be aiming for two different branches. One is a pure self-driving car. You get in the car, you tell it where you want to go, and then you fall asleep a jacket over your waist and start masturbating, read a book, whatever the fuck you want to do. Or all of the above. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the car is taken over. It it just it goes where it needs to go. It's programmed to do this. It has a, a full array of you know, LADAR and all sorts of jazz that lets it navigate. It drives very carefully. It drives relatively slowly and it just gets you there. Neat technology. The other branch is assisted driving, and that's what Ronald Bailey's kind of, oh, I don't see this. Like, he, he thinks it's half-assed and stupid. I mean, he literally, his, his article was, half-assed automation is stupid and dangerous. Fair enough. My response to that, uh, half-assed automation, what he's talking about is the other alternative is a car where it it's more like cruise control. It's better cruise control. It doesn't completely take over the car. You're still there. You still have to be at attention, and the car might say, "Hey, shit's going on. Take over the wheel. Take the wheel, motherfucker. Meat bag. Control is needed from you." So at any moment, you have to jump in. You might have to jump in and take control of the car, particularly where eh, the car thinks it can't. The car thinks. Or the car's programming tells it that it, there's a situation that a human driver might be better suited to a particular situation, and it lets you smoothly transition from the car driving to you driving. I'm kind of with him a little bit. I think in that case, though, I don't think we're seeing the whole story there. Uh, so I, I disagree with him. I, I totally see where he's coming from. But that does sound like that. The, I, that's obviously problematic. But what the market will bear? If that's a thing where people can just, hey, 
God, I really need to answer that text message. I click a button, I see the autopilot snaps in, I then pick up my cell phone or whatever and start texting, like, oh, I'm YOLO, LOL, OMG. And it's like, okay, uh, we're almost there. I'm going to have to park this thing. Talk to you later when I get inside. Blah, blah, blah. Put your phone away. Disengage autopilot. One, two, three. Are you ready to drive? Yes, I am. Now I'm driving again. Eh, I could see it catching on. Uh, it's... Uh, I imagine, and I'm speculating at this point, I imagine that that's a less comprehensive system, a.k.a. a less expensive one. More of a feature you add to a real, relatively normal car, something more familiar to what you see on the road right now, as opposed to a, the radical investment of infrastructure, programming, and so on you have with a true, pure, self-driving car. So I'm not as opposed to it as Ronald Bailey is. I, I don't think I don't think it'll be a you're driving the car half the time sort of situation more of a hey I need to I need my hands free for just a few minutes I'm on a long boring road I'm stuck in traffic you know of, of any place you know I barely am, the car's barely moving it's boring and tedious and stressful for for a little very little pro progress perfect place for a car to take over Traffic jam. Excellent. Yeah, you know, I could crawl in the back seat or something if I need to. No problem. So, that's my reaction to that. I mean, I just think it's... We'll see how that turns out. If something like that even gets close to testing and it causes a really bad accident or it doesn't look like it's working out, they'll scale it back or eliminate it as needed. Done and done. So I don't see what his, what his big bugaboo is. So that's that. Let's now talk about, well, let's, let's see here. Matthew Inman, AKA the Oatmeal. I do not always agree with some of the conclusions Matthew comes to. Mr. Inman and, and I would have a difference of opinion on a number of things, but generally not too much. I find his stuff delightful to read, uh, his comics are funny, and generally I think he's pretty insightful. And then neat guy like reading his site, and even this article, the what was it called again? Uh, doo -doo -doo, six things I learned from riding in a Google self-driving car. By and large, I, I thought the article was funny. I thought it was. I, I largely agreed with it until I came to like one little part. There's like two sentences. Just two little, not even like full paragraphs, just like uh, extended sentences. Just two little sentences, and I'm like, mm, mm, mm. no, Matt, I gotta gotta disagree with you on this one. I gotta disagree. And those two sentences, I will read right now. Let me scooch this over a bit. He gets through these six points. It's very standard for his articles, where he'll do a, yeah, I want to do. Like the like these bulleted, you know. Number one, this thing sucks, and here's why. Number two, and so on. Does these numbered bullet points? It's a cute little organization. A good way of doing it. Especially if you're doing comics, you do a little strip or image for each specific one. That's great. Yeah, I think that works very well. It makes this stuff brief and easy to read. Uh, unlike my stuff, my videos where I just blather on for 20 minutes or so. Number five, though, uh, where he mentions, I want this technology to succeed like yesterday. He mentions his mother had a stroke. She can't get around as much as she used to. And I agree with him. I agree, I agree. And then when discussing, a quote, I am quoting from his article, quote, when discussing self-driving cars, people tend to ask a lot of superficial questions. How much will those cars cost? Is it supposed to replace my car at home? Is it supposed to replace taxis or Uber? What if I need to use a drive-thru?" In fact, let me continue just a little bit. Here's the next line from the next paragraph. They ignore the smarter questions. They ignore that 45% of disabled people in the U.S. still work. They ignore the fact that 95% of a car's lifetime is spent 
parked, and he, he mentioned sources, and he's not wrong about that. Those things are correct. Let's unquote right there. And let's respond to that in just a little bit. Decades ago. Oh, I want to say I know how long, but I remember a teacher telling me about this. And I haven't been to college in... 90s? Since the 90s? Shit, man. They developed a technology, uh, a sort of... Oh, what was it? It was like a hydrogen... It was a propane-powered car. It was a truck. Basically, in the truck bed, there was a truck cap on the, the back, right behind the cab. That wasn't a normal truck cap. This allowed a truck to run on propane fuel. Pure, clean-burning fuel. That is to say, it didn't undergo partial combustion. It went, underwent full combustion. Emissionless combustion. Hey, how crazy awesome does that sound? And what's more is it used propane. The car was was a hybrid of sorts. It could use regular gasoline or it could use propane. Uh, the whole mechanism that allowed to use propane was on the back of the truck. The premise is that while it took up the space of a truck cap, like that back part, by and large you still had the full, the rest of the truck bed empty. It could still be used as a truck. It could still drive around. And propane is ubiquitous enough. I mean, virtually all large hardware stores have big things of propane canisters that you can you can get them there. A lot of gas stations have them, and so on and so forth. And that lovely lady was my talking clock. I'm leaving that in, because everything gets tied together. Anyway, why am I bringing up the truck thing? Um, all right, going through that. So, amazing technology. And it, it exists. It is a thing that exists now. There is nothing in theory, if you weren't you know, dedicated enough, that you couldn't get a hybrid... Uh, gasoline propane car. I, I can't imagine what would stop you from doing so, and there are advantages to doing so. Propane is a clean burning fuel. It is actually fairly damn efficient. I don't know what the price breakdown would be like, the miles per gallon, miles, you know, how far you'd get on propane. I don't know. I don't know how energetic it is as a fuel. But it's interesting. Uh, emissionless fuel is not something anyone in this day and age is going to just dismiss out of hand. And they were ready to move them. They were, those things existed, those trucks existed, there was an entire program around them, they were ready to get those things going and on the roads. Then the government stepped in and did this amazing thing where they were just covering the cost of the conversion. What's more is they were subsidizing the trucks themselves. That sounds great. That's not great that's awful. And here's why. Because the trucks were subsidized, they were cheaper than regular trucks. The problem is they were just regular trucks that had this other thing added on to them. So you get the truck, you get rid of the stupid propane uh, fuel converter, and then sell the truck at profit. You made a profit. You got a truck for less than a truck is worth. You got rid of the, get rid of the stupid propane tank thing. You, it's just a truck at that point. And nothing else happened of it. I mean, it's... You see where I'm coming from. And you almost see where I'm going. And let's get into this at length. Because um, I want to. <sighs> Alright. It's not enough that a technology exist and be useful. It has to be implemented properly. And when I say properly, I generally mean freely. People have to be allowed to adopt it at their own pace. You can't force it. You can't force efficiency or an agenda through technology and through commercial avenues. You can't make people like something they don't like. You can't make people trust something they don't trust. You can work to show that, hey, this thing works. It works great. If it does and if it's inexpensive and it's available, people will adapt it. They will adapt to it, they will adopt it, and they'll use it. And that's where I, leading in, that's where I had my problem with Matt's article. 
When discussing self-driving cars, people tend to ask a lot of superficial questions. Superficial, Matt? Superficial? How much will these cars cost? That's not a superficial question, sir. That is a very valid question. If these cars cost 10 times as much, there's a problem. They're not going to be adapted. They're not going to... I keep saying adapted and adopted like they're the same thing, and you know, thinking about it, they kind of are a little. If it can't integrate into the rest of society, like, you know, this isn't a video game where we just, certain elements are just thrown in at random and the rest of the video game works around it, video game logic. This is a, this is reality. This is real society. It already exists. It has a history. It has a framework many frameworks that interact in a complex and dynamic fashion. If these things are too expensive, it won't work. It just won't work. They'll be too rare, they'll be too hard to invest. For them to get by being overpriced, they have to be insanely good. And honestly, if the car costs too much, I would just use Uber. Uh, what was the next one? Is it supposed to replace my home, my car at home? Once again, why is that a superficial question, Matt? That's not superficial. That's very relevant. Is it supposed to replace your car at home? Is this thing more or less expensive than a regular car? If this is as much as a car, then if I have a self-driving car and a regular car, I have two cars. Regardless of whether or not one of them needs a driver, that's two cars. Not everyone can afford to keep and maintain two cars. Yes, I understand you love the technology and the idea of this technology. Shit, man, I do too. I, I, I do as well. I, I think this, this is an amazing possibility. I love robotics and automation of this sort, smart automation. I think it's incredible. But that's a very extremely not superficial question. It's a very relevant one. Both of those are very relevant. Can I for If I can't afford it, then I'm not going to get the self-driving car, now am I? If it's supposed to replace my car at home, well, what if I have to go someplace in a hurry? What do... What if the self-driving car isn't good enough and I need another car? Do I have to get two cars? The car, in other words, the car has to adapt to real life. Real life is not going to adapt to the car unless the car is fucking amazing. And that's true. That is simply true. That is a true statement. Uh, let's see, what else did he say? Is this supposed to replace taxis or Uber? That's a good question. I raised it myself. I hadn't, I'd forgotten he asked that, and I kind of posited that as well. And in, fa and in fact, he wrote this b well before Uber started making a move on getting their own self-driving cars. Uh, replace? I don't think it will. That's not a superficial question. That's a very relevant one. Uh, I think it will, though. Not so much replace a supplement. In, in all of these situations, Ronald Bailey's article, Matt's article here, The Oatmeal, I don't think these technologies will replace anything. I think they'll supplement them. And that's a very... That's very relevant in its own right, because it's not just that there'll be a bunch of self-driving cars, it's there'll be a bunch of self-driving cars on the same highway as regular human-driven vehicles. I think that self-driving ubers will be a thing alongside regular uber drivers uber uber's big thing has always been its low cost low complete lack of overhead in many cases it is uh, simple as that uh, what else did he ask what if i need to use a drive through that's not a superficial question close but not. It's not. It, that's not superficial. Because there are... drive throughs a lot of stuff. drive through isn't just McDonald's. It's also the 24-hour pharmacy. It's, you know, it, it's things like that, too. There are a lot of situations that the smart car, the self-driving car, is going to need to adapt to. I think it can. 
but it needs to be able to do so. I mean, these are... When he's saying superficial, in my mind, I'm looking at these and go, oh, you mean practical questions. And he, what does he call the opposite of superficial? Smarter questions. They ignore the smarter questions. And the ones he's mentioning, I mean, I can't help notice this. He's mentioning that disabled people work, uh, cars spend most of their lifetime parked, uh, this technology could transform the lives of the elderly, eradicate the need for parking lots or parking garages or gas stations, because they don't think a computer can ever be as good as merging onto the freeway as they are. Okay. The thing is, what Matt has called superficial questions, I'd argue, are practical ones and personal ones. And those are the most important. We do not live our lives for the benefit of self-driving cars. Self-driving cars exist for our benefit so that we can live our lives, so our personal lives can be improved in one way or another. No one's going to develop a technology that they have to radically work their life around to be able to use. It, the technologies that catch on have to catch on naturally. They have to evolve organically. And all of these so-called superficial questions have to have answers before this technology will be adopted, even the drive through thing. Because those, those questions have to have good answers. Uh, wrap up. I think that's it. It's... Well, I agree with both of these people in their articles at large, I kind of disagree with a couple takeaways. Uh, Self-driving cars, I think, are awesome. I would use them in my own life. If I could, like, would I own one? Eh, probably not. I'm not a car owner type person. I'm not looking for more things to be responsible for. I've got a three-story house. I've got multiple people I live with. I've got a cat. I've got enough shit going on. Um, it would just be a thing, and it would just be a thing. Self-driving Uber? Hmm, I'm intrigued. Although I usually like, I've enjoyed talking with the Uber drivers in general. I'd say four-fifths of my experiences with Uber have been very positive because of the drivers. I don't know. So that's really all I have to say about that. I just want to do a quick one-off on that, because it, it just struck me as something I could talk about. Man, I like I like the self-driving car. I'd like to draw attention to them. They're neat, but they, they need to answer a few questions before they're going to become like a common very ubiquitous everyone's seen a self-driving car that's all i'm out